Good afternoon to everybody, and thank you very much for this invitation. I am pleased to say that this is the third meeting I've had with private sector in the last two weeks in two continents. So clearly, uh, this is a very good indication of the way things are going. We have to get the private sector engaged, involved very early on. Um, I've been asked to talk about metrics, but before I talk about metrics, having such a gathering here, I cannot help myself but say a few other comments. Um, the reason that Colombia insisted on the SDGs is because we were tired of the rhetoric. We wanted action. We wanted something concrete. And I know that that is music to the ears of private sector, who sometimes, I'm sure, looks and asks them as to what exactly <laughs> diplomats are doing across the street. Um, however, we do need to realize that the SDGs will only be a part of that post-2015 agenda. You, re you referred to the enabling environment. but. I won't go into it because we could talk a lot about the enabling environment, but just to say that the enabling environment is also part of a two-way street. Because it's not only that we need to create an enabling environment for business to do business, but we need to create an environment so that the private sector finance, so that your efforts, your technology, the R&D, everything that has been talked about so far can be leveraged and capitalized and catalyzed in a way that will make a big difference on the ground. The reality is that regardless of which, how you, you try to split the pie, we're looking at a world where we just will not fit. And if I think that the biggest, greatest threat to our global well-being is not poverty eradication, we agree to that, and that's going to happen. It's the emerging global middle class. That's why you have food riots. That's why you have the Arab Spring. That's why we had three weeks of strikes in Colombia. That's why you had strikes and problems in Turkey, in Brazil, and around the world, and we'll continue to see that. What people are concerned is about losing their hard work when it gains. And you talked about rule of law. The only way that's going to happen, and we're going to create that broader enabling environment, have those consumers you've referred to not only be happy but keep growing, is if we look at this from a different optic. What's important is that this is not, and you mentioned it, a zero. I think Carrie was the one who mentioned it. It's not a zero-sum game. But we have to change the way we think about things because we're used to looking at the world as a zero-sum game. And that's part of the reason why the trade negotiations and so many other things get stuck. If you win, I lose. And in a world of diminishing resources, increasing resource scarcity and all of that, it is going to be very difficult. The MDGs, which everybody has been quoting this, this week, you could take all the MDG targets and stack them up and call them an MDG on poverty reduction. It's not just a few of the targets, all of them. Same goes for health. Sanitation, slums, all that is part of health too. So it's a question of optics. It's a little bit revolutionary, it's counterintuitive. It's saying let's start from the bottom up instead of from the top down. But we, we believe that this is a way of breaking through the logjam and the kind of, of very uh, rhetorical um, discussions we have often in the UN. It will bring you, it will give you a chance to come into the room early on. What are the targets when you talk about rule of law? What are the specific targets that you as private sector would like to see under something called rule of law. When you talk about an enabling environment, what do you want? Use this agenda to drive your agenda for a greater good. But use we need that kind of specificity. What does private sector need? And it's those targets that will help us to make the difference. And that's where the dashboard comes in. What we're asking for the, in the dashboard proposal is really simple. Let's have a core set of, object, of uh, goals with their associated targets and indicators. I'm not talking yet about indicators because it will confuse things enormously. People don't know the difference between targets and indicators, so we, that's why we're parking indicators for the time being too. But if we can look at agreeing to a core set of, tar of goals, targets, and eventually indicators, that's what we would be looking at as a global community. That's what would be aggregated, that's what we would report on, that's what the UN Statistical Commission and the National Commissions would help others to strengthen their capacities on, we would make sure that these indicators are cost effective, measurable, and relevant for driving public policy. Then if somebody has a target on space debris, we can come back and look at it as an outlier and perhaps say, okay, you want to look at space debris, but it will not be part of that global discussion. So it's if, if we can center, if we can be uh, substantive, focus on the targets, try to understand what are the key issues for different constituencies, groups, and sectors bring that to the table and agree to narrow it down to a core set of indicators and targets and goals. That, I think, will be an agenda that could really drive that transformation that we're talking about. Thank you so much.